Meeting Laura Jackson for the first time, you're bound to notice her exuberance. She's bright, bubbly even, what you might expect from a former cheerleader. You'd notice her smile, but probably after you notice that she can't move from the neck down. Whoever would have thought cheerleading would have been, you know, could kill someone or break their neck. We're doing things that we don't think that are dangerous because we're kids. Even in elementary school, Laura and her sister Jenna were pepping up the crowd. Their oldest sister was captain of the high school cheerleading squad. Jenna made captain her senior year. It was Laura's time to take the spotlight. But the day of tryouts, things went terribly wrong. She's laying all, you know, cockeyed, and I'm like, hey, Laura, like, come on, like, get up, what's wrong, you know? And she's like, I can't, like, mouthing it, like, I can't breathe. Her lips are, like, getting blue. All of a sudden... I'm the one laying on the floor, and I can't breathe, and I can't move, and you're thinking, what just happened? Attempting a back tuck during tryouts, Laura landed on her neck, crushing her C1 and C2 vertebrae, leaving her paralyzed. You see the movie Grease, and in the movie, Sandy just is rolling around some pom-poms and doing a cartwheel. Well, now they're throwing girls 30 feet in the air, and we're all doing back tucks and back handsprings. Essentially, we've gone from Greece to bring it on at lightning speed. And athletically, those are worlds apart. Well, early on, I mean, the cheerleaders didn't have very serious injuries at all. They may have a sprained ankle or a sprained knee. But then when they started to get to these new activities, doing all these gymnastic-type stunts, and uh, this is what caused the problem. There definitely are places that are doing it right, and they're throwing the right stunts, but they have the right precautions and they have the right coaching. And I think if you make cheerleading a sport like other women's sports, then you'd have the same facilities. You'd have an athletic trainer. Nearly 30,000 cheerleaders are treated in emergency wards every year. But for many teen girls, the perceived social benefits overshadow any safety concerns. I would have done anything to get on the team. Like, you want to fit in with people. You want to, you know, be a part of a group. This generation, more than any other, they're pushing themselves extremely hard academically, socially, with areas of interest and hobbies to be everything to everyone and to be the best in all of those domains. You want to fit in, and sometimes it ends up costing more than we ever imagined. For Laura, that cost was her independence. Her family and a team of nurses help her change the channel, blow her nose, and always stay close at hand in case her vent pops off and she can't breathe, or if the muscle spasms that are beyond her control pull out her tubes. But within all of this dependency, there's a lot of humor. You make light of the situation, which I really think helps. I'm really not that bad. I'm, I'm paralyzed and I can't breathe. That's the only thing that's wrong with me, so I, there's no reason for them to treat me differently. But things are different. High school sucked for Laura. Like lost all her friends, not going to dances, no one calling her to hang out. So it's like, oh, that sucks. Well, now she's in college, and then same things again. It's her older sisters that give Laura a lot of her social experiences, taking her out on the weekends, which can mean a lot of responsibility for everyone involved. I had to worry, though, about I always having the right people around me that I trusted that could take care of me, that would make sure nothing happened to me. Her sisters feel that pressure, especially Jenna, who's been by Laura's side since her fall. I mean, like, what are we going to do, like, when she gets older? Like, that's something, like, that none of us really have an answer or a plan for. I just want her to be Whatever that entails. Laura still thinks cheer was a great experience for the most part. If improved regulation and more safety measures are made mandatory across the nation, she'd encourage any girl to go for it. We had so much fun, even just at practice, messing around. It's just like any other sport, you know. I don't have a bad life at all. I know people probably look at me and think, oh my God, her life, I mean, it is hard. Everyone's life is hard, though, in different ways. I'm not going to let it stop me from living my life as normally as possible and going out with friends and going to college and doing what I always kind of wanted to do and expected it of myself to do. For MSNBC.com, I'm Carissa Ray in Livonia, Michigan.